Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Don't Starve storyline. Today we will continue this story by going back to the beginning. In the latest puzzle called the Meteus Puzzles, you can learn some interesting new lore about the beginning of the constant and the free skin which you can still get today. In the first image we see ancient bug people who I assume are worshipping the moon. The reason I say moon is because you can see an object in the sky which clearly looks like the moon cycle. For some reason though, the ancients move underground where the moon, their god, can no longer see them. They take with them a bunch of gems, some dark and some white. I assume the black gems are the ones you find in-game inside the ruins, since to use any of them to their fullest potential you need nightmare fuel which is black. Conversely, the white gems are most likely from the moon itself, since in-game you can turn a yellow staff into a white one by letting the moon convert it. Both gems from the light and dark are used to power a portal for unknown purposes. Two rulers stand in front of the portal, one with a cane and one with a torch. You get a torch skin from the cyclone puzzles and you get a cane skin from the Meteus puzzles. Therefore, I'm gonna call the guy with the torch cyclone and the guy with the cane Meteus. This cane seems to hold dark properties while the torch creates light, which will become important in the second mural, because something is changing. There's evidently a lot more dark than light in the portal and the people seem to favor Meteus over Cyclone. Using the power of the fuel, Meteus crafts a bunch of food, gems, clockworks and even a nightmare powered skeleton. I have no idea why you would do this, but the crowd seems to agree so they probably know what they're doing. I think. The portal then gets over flooded with darkness killing everyone there. They accidentally overused the nightmare fuel and now must suffer the consequences brought by whatever this eye is. This eye could be the dam Max was talking about earlier but it's not clear. Luckily Cyclops steps in and defends Meteus using the light from the torch. This stops the darkness from winning and civilization returns to normal and everyone is happy. Just kidding, Cyclops also dies and the kid Meteus is the only one left. One thing to note though is that the portal in which the eye came from is now broken. So despite the fact that everyone here is dead, they still stop whatever was coming out of the portal from fully leaving. You can still find the remnants of the ancients if you travel to the ruins in the caves. However, because this place is being completely taken over by Nightmare Fuel, it's not really a good idea unless you have strong gear. The thing that's strange is that we never see any skeletons of the ancients. Like you would think if they died from the Nightmare Fuel, they'd have some bodies or something left, but no, there's nothing here. All these statues and other stuff is still there, but there's no evidence anyone was even here. It's like they just got up and left at one point. The commentary usually credited to Zeklo states that these nightmare creatures are actually the ancients. It might sound crazy at first, but there's a lot of evidence towards this. In game you can find this hidden part of the ruins called the Atrium and in there there's more murals which tell us how their civilization fell but again. The first one depicts an old civilization, people look hungry and scared. In the second one, we all know what happens next. Thanks Maxwell. The second mural is unreadable because it's too worn out to make out, but I presume the civilization discovered nightmare fuel because the next one shows something dark creeping over the city and its people. This darkness makes the people start shedding their skins. You would think this is an awful thing, but apparently it's not, since according to the last mural, the darkness had created a massive technologically advanced city, which is a lot better than the starving people in the first one. If we assume that the statues and the ruins are statues of the ancients, then you might notice an interesting detail. These statues look eerily similar to one of the nightmare creatures, as the spikes on its back and everything. Since we never see any dead bodies of the ancients, it would be logical to assume that when these people shed their skins, it was because they turned into the nightmare creatures. The ancients never disappeared or died, they just turned into the nightmare creatures we see everywhere. Inside the atrium you can find the same portal which the ancients used all those years ago. After falling through two portals that led him to a very bad thing, what do you think Wilson does when he sees another one? Obviously, he would try to summon the skeletal being from the murals by first killing our hidden boss in a random corner of the caves, then killing another boss on the surface which is actually a collection of three bosses, only summonable on a very specific day at night, created by putting together randomly placed marble pieces, only to then mine a shit ton of rocks so we can summon the skeletal being from the murals in the atrium. Once you complete this very simple step, you can fight the ancient fuel weaver, the final boss of Don't Starve Together. Fighting this boss is interesting because not only are you now activating this 
same portal that destroyed the ancients, but the Fuel Weaver is one of the few mobs that can actually speak. He mentions things like my city, my world, and how we've fallen. So it's safe to assume that this guy is one of the rulers of the ancient civilization, reborn in the skeleton you just put him in. He says things like, this is for the best, I will save you, which sounds like a very kind deed until you realize he's planning on killing you to stop you from activating the portal. Luckily, everyone who plays this game is a brain dead idiot, so we will kill the ancient fuel lever and activate the portal despite his warnings. I say kill, but in reality we just get him down to one health, which is when Charlie steals our kill by using her powers. This is literally what happens in the game. After this, the evil thing from the Merles comes out of the portal and it is so horrific that I'm not even allowed to show it on YouTube. This eldritch being then closes your don't starve together and infects your computer with a virus that replaces every file on your desktop with Maxwell laughing at you. What actually happens is that nothing happens. You sit there for two minutes while the portal makes toilet flushing sounds. No abomination comes out of the portal, no credits start the roll, nothing even changes with the world. You just get let out of the arena so you can return to the hell spawn that are the other players on your server. Canonically though, something else happens. The portal leads you to skins, skins and more skins in this stone star event where you fight rounds of enemies with your friendly teammates. In November of 2017, in 2017, there was a fighting minigame called The Forge released to Don't Starve Together. It was more of an event than a permanent feature, but for some reason it's important to the story. The villain of The Forge, Pugna, has a lot of interesting things to say. When you enter The Forge, he says, Gatekeepers, have you come to return us to the throne? Apparently, Pugna was betrayed in some way by the same entity that the ancients were killed by. He and his people were teleported to an alternate realm still in the constant made of lava and stone. This detail will explain how the two Don't Starve DLCs fit into the story. All of these places are still in the constant, just in a separate world. It's hard to believe, but what you see in gameplay is only a small fraction of what the constant really looks like, and only now are we beginning to see these different worlds. Anyways, he seems to believe you are the servants of this same force which is why he sends his troops after you. Do you understand the forces you serve? They destroy all they touch. We were severed from the throne trapped in a realm of stone and fire. Maxwell calls him severely deluded but it's hard to say he is wrong. After all, you were the one who killed the fuel lever and activated the portal with the literal queen of darkness helping you. So in a sense you are literally serving them. Though from our perspective it's more of a truce that randomly happened if anything else. Unlike Maxwell, Charlie doesn't do anything to try to directly kill you, but she hasn't really helped you with anything either. But like, come on, what's activating this random portal going to do for her anyway? It's not like doing that would somehow give her any kind of power, right? That's just ridiculous. Once you defeat all of Pugna's troops, he surrenders and lets you pass through the portal again. Instead of taking you back to the atrium, this portal takes you to another realm in the constant called the Gorge. Imagine the forge, but with only three people and you have to cook instead of fight. Here you must cook food for the giant sky wormhole known as the Gna, or you will be cursed and turned into a merm. Yes, they made a full on animation of you turning into a merm. The world here has a surprising amount of depth to it, and you'll probably miss out on what's going on if you don't examine everything carefully. According to one of the traders, this town used to be a thriving one in its glory days. However, one day an unfathomable being appeared in the sky terrorizing the gorgeous citizens. The city, or what remains of it, is completely destroyed and no one's in it. The few who are still alive have been turned into merms, though they still have some of their conscience left, preventing them from randomly attacking you like the ones in game. What's terrifying about this is that you can visibly see him start to lose it. He starts forgetting what he was doing and mentions how he's been having odd cravings for fish lately. Another NPC states that many of our sick disappeared into the sea, almost like they're traveling somewhere. These guys are slowly traveling transforming into violent, brainless merms in the constant. Soon enough, he too will jump into the water, travel to the mainland and be no different than the merms around him. Up until this point, most people who got put into an awful nightmare realm either made a deal with the wrong person or just did it to themselves. Now we are being shown worlds which are randomly destroyed by them. Places that didn't deserve any of this or didn't do anything special. These people were just living normal lives until an unimaginable power appeared in the sky. 
We're no longer seeing the aftermath of a long dead civilization. We are staring straight in the face of a dying one. The Gnos plague doesn't end there either. You can find a small pig village in the forest that has also been completely trashed. You meet an old pig here and in his sleep all you can think about is the Gna, the plague and the scales growing on his arm. He fears what the little pigs would do if the elder was gone. It's a miserable existence for him. He can't fight the curse which is slowly building on his arm. He just has to slowly accept the fact that he and his village will soon be eradicated. This isn't the only character with this problem. The person who teaches you the basics of the gorge is a goat named Mumsy. She is the perfect example of someone who helplessly fights the plague, only to fail in the end. Despite the giant monster in the sky, she continues trying to raise her son who is completely unaware of what is going on. She hasn't technically failed in doing this yet, but seeing the scales on her lower body tell you a lot about what's going to happen in the future. Luckily, Maxwell walks up to her son and tells him that he has no future ahead of him. Anyways, don't think too much about all that since none of it is ever mentioned again. You cook like 5 meals before activating the portal and apparently that's all it took to escape the gorge. Since we don't really know where they went after that, we just have to assume Wilson and everyone else end up back at the atrium and they're like, okay guys, now let's go fishing on a boat while bringing absolutely no fishing gear at all to maximize our chances of death. Seriously, these guys, can we talk about how poorly prepared the characters are in every single animation? You would think by now someone would learn to bring a weapon or something, but no. Everyone is just extremely stupid and have no idea what they're doing. Oh look, the moon fell out of the sky, and it created a new island, so everyone decides to go to investigate it. This place is really cool since you can find a new type of shadow creature that isn't actually a shadow creature because it's made of the light from the moon. It's still a aggressive towards the player but they can't damage you, at least not yet. Sometime later Charlie appears on this island holding something similar to the tragic torch from the murals. She uses these spirits to fuel her torch and uses that to look at the moon who is revealed to be a sleeping eye. Apparently this whole time the moon was secretly a giant eyeball staring down at us and watching your every move. This moon god is similar to the eye from the portal in the sense that both have the ability to change things. The nightmare fuel in the ruins completely changed the ancient's appearance, while the moon converts physical typical mobs of the constant into a lunar variant. It's also probably the same thing that changes pigs to were pigs upon a full moon. Come to think of it, why is it that shadow pieces are only spawnable when the moon is completely dark? And why do moon transformations only happen on a full moon? Hmm. That's kinda weird anyways. While this is all happening, Wilson, Maxwell and Charlie's sister Winona all head to the caves where they discover that the lunar island has infected the area underneath it as well. Not only that, but this crash landing has revealed a completely hidden part of the ruins, the archives. Winona looks at Maxwell like she wants an explanation, but his only response is shock. Despite being the king of the world for an eternity, there are still parts of this world that he has no idea even existed. This place is powered by iridescent gems from the moon, which would mean that this section of the ruins was the place where the ancients would worship the moon, at least before it was abandoned in favor of nightmare fuel. There's even some murals in here, and if you examine them as Maxwell, you get this. These ruins are different. I can only glean a hint of their meaning. This symbol here keeps repeating. The change? No, it's a name. Altar. If the ancients built this place to worship the moon, then it's safe to say that Altar is the name of their god. If you decide to power the archives using iridescent gems, the entire place turns on. There's now a bunch of lights and killer robots that suddenly become active, driving the tree out of the archives. Outside, a battle between the light and dark has occurred. The nightmare creatures start appearing everywhere targeting the white spirits who fight back. The entire cave is pretty much collapsing by this point, however in the distance Maxwell and Winona notice Charlie entering the archives. If you recall, Winona entered the constant with the hopes of rescuing her missing sister, so it would make sense that she would try talking to her. In the first good deed that Maxwell has done since... ever, 
He pulls Winona out of the collapsing cavern before she can die. Inside the archives, Charlie heads towards a deactivated portal that currently has no purpose in the game. It's likely that this is going to lead somewhere in the next big update, but we don't know where. Anyways, on the surface, the survivors build an altar to alter. This makes the moon so powerful that night time is now light time and you can see in the dark. You finally get an infinite light source that literally kills off the darkness. However, this also comes at the cost of summoning a lunar storm filled with strange birds and other anomalies. And it is in this storm where Wagstaff finally appears. Except there is something really weird going on with him. He's not like anyone else in the constant in the sense that he is flickering about Almost like he's a hologram. I mean, his name is literally Grainy Transmission, so it's safe to say that he's not really there in the constant. Though if that's true, this brings up a big plot hole, since he should have gotten trapped in here by that portal. Yet according to the game, he's not actually in the constant, so... um. If this isn't a plot hole and the only explanation I can give is that Wagstaff is in the constant, just on a different island separate from you, because I guess he really hates society or something. I don't know why he would do this, but it's the only reasonable way he can both be simultaneously there and not. Anyways, Wagstaff is here to build some kind of evil invention. It seems his only real goal is to abuse the power of the constant's weird magic so he can become super powerful. For some reason he's a playable character in the Hamlet DLC, and there's proof of this in his quotes. For example, if you examine a Dark Sword as a Wagstaff, instead of being shocked like everyone else's, his first thought is to use it in military applications. And that is exactly why we help him build whatever thing he's making. There's this little mini game where you protect him from the birds who want to attack him while he builds something and you hand him all the tools that he needs. And you know, I think we might be the bad guy of the story. There have been some really shitty people in this story, but the fact that the survivors keep helping the worst parties possible really makes you question their motivations. After protecting Wagstaff for a bit, everyone goes to the lunar island to build the contraption he wanted you to make. Doing this pisses off Alter so much that he wakes up and sends a kind of robot rock moon thing after you. Luckily, in-game everyone is overpowered as hell so you should easily kill the new final boss. Wagstaff then appears out of thin air and steals the light energy into his machine before saying in the most not evil way possible, Excellent! My little experiment was a resounding success! Thank you for all your hard work! Now if you'll excuse me, I have much to do! After he leaves, the entire world turns into complete darkness. For a day before returning to normal. And that's where the story currently ends for now. Not because there's more story that I haven't talked about, but because the rest of the story has yet to come out. There's still a few character reworks, the whole Charlie thing going to the ancient portal and whatever Wagstaff's going to do. We will most likely see what happens next, eventually, but it took two years for Clay to finish this arc, so I don't think we're going to get any answers soon. My personal theory is that you literally killed the moon by letting Wagstaff steal its energy, which is why the world turns dark after you do it. Just like how powering up the moon removes all the darkness, taking its energy away only intensifies the darkness that was already there. In fact, if I had to guess, this single day of night time is probably eternal darkness in this story, but for obvious games, Gameplay reasons, it had to be turned into a single day of darkness just so the rest of the game is still fully playable. Anyways, that's just one of the random theories I thought of while making this video. Here's the word theory. So I mentioned this briefly in the Iceberg video, but there's this playable character who is a merm. So I said that if merms are people who get cursed like we see in the gorge, then Wirt is just some kid who got corrupted by the Gnaw and is now a merm. People pointed out how she was probably a goat like everyone else in the gorge, which is more than likely true since there's no other humans other than the survivors there. However, this theory goes a lot deeper than most people think, and I've come to the conclusion that this small child who likes to read books is going to kill all the survivors one day. One thing about Wirt's character is that she's not like the other merms and won't instantly kill you on sight. In fact, she's often portrayed as being smarter than the rest of the merms because she can read at a young age. However, we've actually seen a character just like this before, and it is in the gorge. We have already been shown how the transformation to merm isn't instant. The merms here can still think and make trades with you, which is far different from the ones at home. What's important here is that when the trader, Sammy, 
is slowly losing his mind and becoming just like the rest of the Murms. Half of his dialogue is just him forgetting who you are or what he was doing. Soon enough he'll be just like everyone else in the swamp. Now what does this mean for Wirt? The fact that she can still speak properly and interpret her surroundings tells us that she only recently transformed into a merm. You can even still see the goat horns popping out of her head. However, if I were to use Sammy as evidence then that would mean that eventually Wirt too will start forgetting things and slowly become like the rest of the merms. I believe that one day everyone is going to be at the base doing their own thing while Wirt finally snaps and attacks someone just like the regular merms in the constant. And that's basically all there is to the Don't Starve story. For now at least. The only thing I haven't talked about is the Wolfgang rework video which basically just showed an, an event that already happened in animation form. I wouldn't expect Clay to make any big developments in the story for at least another few years since it took two years just for them to finish Return of Them. Anyways that's the end of this video, thank you for watching and goodbye.